Okay, now um, it's our job, panelists, should you choose to accept it, to wrap up uh, briefly um, and give us a couple of key takeaway messages in the next two minutes. So I will start to, with, with Rizal actually, because I feel very guilty that I have slightly ignored you. Do you want to give us a few takeaways? Um, I think the takeaways are that um, uh, rare cancers may be a model for all cancers and that uh, we need to look at cancers as individuals uh, and uh, we think of them as snowflakes. I'm from Canada so we're familiar with snowflakes. Each snowflake is complicated, each snowflake is unique and we do genomics, when we do immune profiles, that's what we've seen with cancer. Each one is complicated, each one is unique and we need to treat them that way so rare cancers can be a model for everything that we do, really for all cancers. And that would be my takeaway. Well, that, that's great. I'd like us to rehabilitate the snowflake, um, certainly. Greg, would you like to? Well, you don't need to have, you don't have to be a PhD to know what the cancer research system and care system should look like. So what I ended up telling my mother, who was shocked at everything I was working on, we're trying to create the cancer research care and care system that most people think we already have. Mm -hmm. They think we share, they think we put patients first, they think that everybody's working together and that there are standards and that their knowledge is disseminated among all doctors in the country. That's not the case, it should be the case. We need a cancer system that is worthy of the courage of people like Tessa Jowell and, and we can get there, but it's going to require changing some things up here as well as in the lab. Jill? So at the Cancer Research Institute, it's all about research, and that's what I would say is the bottom line. Uh, as much as I say, I think probably less so at the patient care level, but at the research level, there is a lot of collaboration that has gone on, and it still goes on. And I think that uh, people should realize that, and it's going to take research from across from basic laboratory, correlative science, and clinical research. And I think that's the only place the answers come from. And I think funding for that needs to be increased. Laurie? I am fed up with cancer researchers and clinicians who don't put the patient first. And putting the patient first to me means not being worried about who's publishing what when, but working together, sharing everything we know because no one place and no one person can do this alone. We have to do it together. You know, I, I, I'm honored to be the CEO of an institution like Dana-Farber where we deliver both exceptional care and do extraordinary research. And the thing I love best about Dana-Farber is that everybody buys into that mission. I wish that were true of everybody who did cancer research because, you know, we only go around once and what is the most important thing we can accomplish? Why are we working so hard? Why, why do my oncologists and our researchers, why are they there 18 hours a day? It is not for their own personal glory, it is because we want to make cancer go away. And I, ha I like to say, you know, Dana-Farber can disappear when cancer disappears, but until then, we need to keep on working and we must work together.